You made all things new, yes, you made all things new, and I will follow you for hey everybody, it's your girl Naj, and I am back with another video. So from the title, I'm sure you can tell that I'm going to be sharing my testimony of me being an ex party girl to now a church girl and let me just say i am thankful for the change that god has done in me when i tell you a lot of people talk about oh you know they want a makeover but god made me over from the inside out so, and he's continuing to you know make me over so i'm thankful for the work that he started and i know he's gonna finish and so Without further ado, let's get on to this. Okay, so lately I've been getting a lot of questions about Naj, do you want to go to the club? Naj, let's hang out at the hour spots. Like, you know, let's meet up at this lounge. And I'm like, a lot of these questions and invitations are coming from people who know full well that the club ain't my scene no more. And for those who don't know, like, I used to be a big party hopper like the club was my thing like I clubbed from Monday to Saturday I did the only reason why at the time I didn't club on Sundays because I'm like well at least I need one day to rest I would go to work and at the time I was in school too so I would uh go to school go to work and then hit the club heavy like every day I didn't drink I didn't smoke I just like the atmosphere of the club I like getting dressed child mother had on her jeans that was painted on <laughs> practically i had my little one arm shirts for the pasties and i had the long weaves i mean one time i had like a 20 inch weave down my back one time i had like what you call those things flat twist in the back with a star in the back of my head then i had these little spikes it was just a whole lot going on but that's where i was at that time i was lost looking for love in the wrong places and faces but i thank god for the change like i said that he started in me because as the other songwriter said i don't look like what i've been through i thank god that he took me out them clubs and i'm proud to be a church girl because the reality set in that for me when you're in those clubs everybody's in there looking for something they're looking for love. They're looking for joy. They're looking for peace. But you're not going to find it in darkness. <laughs> I mean, when you go into them clubs, is the lights are dim. All the women are half-dressed. The guys are, you know, whatever. It'd be a lot of, you know, sexual stuff going on. It's a lot of alcohol at the time. You could smoke in there. It's just, it's just an atmosphere of sin. That's basically what it is. It's an atmosphere of sin and nothing good is going to come out of it. And how, if I say I love God, and at the time I love God, but my, I didn't have like a solid relationship with the Lord. But now, the place where I am now, how is me going to those clubs going to help me grow spiritually? I'm waiting. <laughs> no way. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm Christian and I still hang out at the club. Well, that's you. But for me, I can't do that. Like, the Lord has made me free. So I am going to what? Stay free. I'm not going back into that environment. I, I don't want to invite those spirits back into my heart because that ain't nothing but lust. I know that song Usher from back in the day talking about love in this club. No, that's just lust in this club. And I know people are going to be like, oh, well, you judging that. No, I'm not judging nobody. I'm, I'm, I actually mind my own business. I'm just sharing my own testimony. And if we're completely honest with each other, then I know you know it ain't no love in that club. It's just lust. At the time when I was going to the club, I was, like I said, I was in there pretty much every day. I would work, come home, and then hit the club heavy. And at the time I had... This one guy friend, it was nothing going on or anything. We were just real tight. He liked the party. I did too. And so we would meet up every day after work and we would go. But then he wound up getting a girlfriend. So I didn't really have him to, you know, hang out with no more. So I couldn't go as often because I didn't want to go by myself. But the times that I did go, like I said, it was just 
I mean, I call myself having fun because you, like I said, it's in a dark place. You get a lot of attention because you dress scantily clad. The guys pouring over you because outside of the club, I wasn't really getting approached. I didn't have a good relationship with my dad. So I was looking for love. I wanted a boyfriend at the time because I did not want to be that single friend. I didn't have any self-esteem. I didn't have any confidence. But I kept my hair done. I kept the outside looking nice. But inside, I was all jacked up. And by the way, if you want a story time on the very last time that I went to the club, let me know in the comments down below and I will be sure to do a video on that. But I just thank God for freedom. Freedom. I don't have to look for love in no club. Like Christ died for me. That's the ultimate sacrifice of love. And not to say that I'm looking for somebody <laughs> to die for me and nothing like that. But he just showed me how much he loves me. So I don't have to go looking for no artificial love or no fake love. All I got to do is be nausea, serve God, and I'm good in Christ. Okay, only get your Bibles, okay? Because I just want to share the scripture with you real quick. And it reads, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. I wanted to go to the clubs. I wanted to be in, be in that environment. But now... I don't have a desire to do that. But when I was going, it said my sinful nature craved it. I kept wanting to do it. I yearned to be there because my flesh was fed, but my spirit was still empty. The Bible goes on to say, these two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, Outbursts of anger, selfish, amb selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I want to go to heaven. So if me saying I can't do that, God give me the strength to change my desire to what you want then so be it. Verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. That means if I say I love Christ, I cannot do what I want to do. It does not matter that I'm an adult and I can make my own decisions. In Christ, we are his children. And when your parent tells you can't do something, I mean, you can, but there's repercussions for those decisions. I done got whooped a couple of times for doing what I wanted to do from my natural parent as well as from Christ. And, I, and as my brother Thomas LeVon would say, if you want the clock ministry, then you go ahead. But I done did that before. I done got clocked in the head a couple of times. Mother done learned her lesson, so we ain't going to go there no more. Okay. <laughs> And lastly, verse 25 reads, since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Plainly put, you're not going to find what you're looking for outside of the will of God. And my prayer is, God, my will is to want your will. I know what I want. I know what I would like. But if it doesn't line up with your will, then I don't even want to want it. And that comes from maturing in Christ and really understanding how much God loves us. And how he wants the best for us. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of this video. But before I end, I just want to say a quick prayer. All right. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for everything that's been said in this video and everything that's been done. I pray that 
this video is seen by those who need to see it and those who don't even want to see it. God, I pray that it finds itself in their YouTube feed or their Facebook feed, whatever, whatever social media accounts they have attached. Lord, I just thank you for the boldness, for the transparency and me being able to share. And I pray that it helps somebody. Lord, I pray that people will feel the conviction in this video and I pray that they will turn from their ways and live a life with you in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I got to tell y'all, it's a good life. I don't have no complaints and I'm not looking what? Back. See you on the next video.